why are you wearing that stupid man suit? Hey, how's it going, friends? It's Robert IDK here, and today we're gonna get all spooky. Ugh. And to avoid sweating three minutes into the video, I'm gonna take that off. Today, we are looking at childhood fears. This is a topic I've wanted to explore for a while now because I already have made videos about people's childhood fears and my own, and it's a topic that I find very fun. And some of our favorite animators have talked about it in their videos as well. And so today, people, let's get spooky. Let's explore childhood fears. Let me explain studios. Jaden Animations. Young Young Tales. And... Jim We've got a bunch of videos that I'm so excited to watch. And you know, guys, since we are in a spooky mood, I'm gonna do it. If you don't think we're about to do this, we're about to do this. Homies, if you're ready, at long last, theme song. What do you do when you're easily spooked and everything is scary? Torch yourself with clips from YouTube or call your best friend Gary. So grab some popcorn and just enjoy the ride because Robert IDK's a whim. Let's start it out with our homie Rebecca Parham. Let me explain studios. My childhood fears. Because I think she will give us a good first look at childhood fears. Let's go. Three, two, one. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and hello. entertainers, my little oodle lollies. That's me! Rebecca Parham here. Hello. Uh, so this is a little embarrassing, a possible design flaw, but my elevator swing is uh, uh, not, stuck. Not elevator. But don't worry, I called for reinforcements earlier. So, do you think you could get here soon? Ah, oh, thanks. Great, you're a lifesaver, buddy. Yeah, no problem. I'll be there in a flash. Okay, bye-bye. He's in England! Yeah, what better time to talk about childhood fears than while you're stuck high up into the air? Yeah, probably probably not the time probably not the time to be talking about spooky things, if you ask me. Yes, I know I'm a tune and I could technically survive the fall. <laughs> But the landing is still painful, and the way down is still very scary. And yeah. I'd rather spare myself the fear, thank you. Yeah. So until the cavalry arrives, why don't we just chat? Fear is a funny thing, isn't it? If you've seen Pixar's Inside Out, you know that each of your emotions has a job to do that's essential to your survival and overall well-being. Mm -hmm. Fear's job is to keep you safe, stop you from doing stupid things that will hurt or kill you. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, and socially. Yeah. But sometimes fear <laughs> makes some strange decisions about what it perceives to be a threat. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see your point about this giant cliff. Very big, very scary, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. But, uh... Why? Clowns! Okay, not the strongest example, cause cause clowns can be very spooky. Before we get to the clown thing, actually I guess I'll touch on it. I'm not like afraid of clowns, but as a child I was. Clowns are weird. Clowns are a thing that were like invented in like the 1800s and the appearance of them has not changed since and we still just allow it to exist. <laughs> Why? When we're kids, fear is a kid too. It hasn't figured out True. the world yet. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be afraid of. I don't trust that vacuum. Nah, but that nah. strange man offering free candy out of his white van? Now that's the picture of trustworthy right there. When I was a kid, my biggest fear was loud noises. Mm -hmm. And by extension, I feared Spooky. anything that made loud noises. Most specifically, fireworks, those oh. door stoppers that go Oh. And <laughs> especially balloons. My mortal enemy. We meet again. A balloon just had to be in the room and I would side-eye it suspiciously the entire time. When she said loud noises, I was like, okay, that's fair. That's a normal thing. And then she was like describing things that maybe like a dog would be scared by. Valid fears, valid. You're valid. I'm just saying I was never spooked out by no door stepper. A balloon just had to be in the room and I would side-eye it suspiciously the entire time. Mm -hmm. Like I thought, any second now it will inexplicably pop out of nowhere and then I'll die. I was talking to my it's mom possible. about this old phobia of mine, and she told me this story from when I was three years old. I don't personally remember this incident, but it certainly left a mark on my mom. One weekend, my parents took me and my sister Rachel to the circus. The whole three okay. rings, clowns, flying trapeze, type rope walkers, uh, you get it. Now I don't and have never had a fear of clowns, so I didn't mind when the painted jokesters emerged, mm -hmm. driving their comedically small vehicle to perform the classic clown car gag. The clown car gag? What gag is that when like 10 clowns 
sounds come out of a tiny car. I mean, she's gonna explain it to us, but I like pr I like trying to guess. Just the classic clown car bit. Oh, hey, we're driving the silly mobile. Ho ho. Perform the classic clown car gag. The car drove up, the door opened, a clown avalanche occurred. Yeah. And then as the car was yeah. being driven away, it backfired out its tailpipe. Huh? And it backfired incredibly loudly, like the blast of a shotgun, complete oh. with special effects flash and puff of smoke. And oh. I, sitting in the stands with my family, was so horrified by this sudden loud noise that I stood up, put my hands on my ears, and just started screaming at the top of oh my, my house. Oh my gosh. Just standing there, screaming. It's like I thought, if I'm just louder than the loud noise, I shall win the day. Ah! My sister Rachel must have thought, oh, I guess this is what we're doing now, because she quickly oh, no. followed no, suit, stop standing it. up with her hands on her Don't ears, being the harmony to my ah! melody of terror. Loud noises can be spooky. Honestly, like, my fire alarm, so at, at my current place, I have a fire alarm that is so sensitive. Not only is it the most sensitive fire alarm at any place I have ever lived at, but it is also the loudest fire alarm of any place I've ever lived at, and it is the worst. It will freak me out. But yeah, when you're a kid, you hear the <laughs> of an engine. You know, that could be spooky. Spooky things have happened when engines have gone boom. Let's keep it real. Harmony to my melody of terror. I didn't get taken to another circus until I was 11 years old, and it was Cirque du Soleil. As an adult, I can say I pretty much grew out of this fear. Me and Balloons, we're back on speaking terms. <laughs> but if I'm honest, there's still a small part of me that doesn't oh, care for no. sudden loud noises. If you ever watch me during a fireworks show, you can see a teeny tiny little micro flinch every time one of those big mortars huh, goes Huh, interesting. It probably looks like I have a nervous tick or something. Now, another fear I had growing up was oddly specific, but maybe it's one a few of you can relate to. I was absolutely terrified of the feeling of flying out of your seat on theme park rides. Right, You right. know, the thing that people actually like about theme park rides, <laughs> the thing they stand in line for 90 minutes to experience, yeah. anything with a steep drop in it yeah. made me think I was going Ooh. to die. It could be a roller coaster, a log flume, a shoot the shoot ride if you want to get theme park nerdy, but my absolute nemesis growing up was the drop tower rides. Ah, of course, of course. That suddenly drop you. Ah. One of, of the course. most famous drop towers. <gasps> Yo, the Tower of Terror. Did I not just talk about, I feel like I talked about this of recording like two days ago that I haven't seen since I did it. The Tower of Terror, bro. She's about to talk about the Tower of Terror. Okay, before that, man, that feeling of, of going on a roller coaster and getting that woo the first time. The first time you go on a roller coaster and you feel that like, whoa, like everything's flying up inside you for the first time. That's the the craziest feeling ever. Your body's like never experienced it. Yeah, that's the joy, man. That's the joy. That's why in uh, in Canada's Wonderland, which is basically our theme park in like the Toronto area, the two biggest coasters, unless they've changed in the last few years since I've been gone, uh, were Behemoth and Leviathan. They didn't have loops because they didn't need to have loops. They just went super high and had a super steep drop. And that was the entire appeal of it. Like they were cool the rest of the, the time, but yeah, that's why people wrote it. One of the most famous drop towers is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror oh, over yeah. at Hollywood Studios in Disney World. Oh yeah. This ride was my worst nightmare. Mm -hmm. You see, Disney is really good at setting a mood and psyching you out before you even get on the ride. Theming, as they call it. Yeah. And I was very susceptible to all of that as a kid. I had a hard time remembering that this was all make-believe. <laughs> so a drop tower themed as a creepy haunted hotel with an elevator that will kill you yeah, that was maybe a, a little bit of a trigger for young me. Yeah, and Very often on our Disney vacations, an adult had to wait outside with me while everyone else enjoyed the ride. So when I was about eight years old, I was still dealing with this fear. And mom and dad saw yeah. this as a teaching opportunity. Time to face one's irrational fears head on and learn that yeah. there are far more terrifying things in this world yeah. than an amusement park ride. Yeah, see, it's not safety spooky. safety regulations built into it. Yeah, in their mind, her parents in their mind are like, okay, Becca, it is time to learn a lesson. Today, we will decide that your fears are no more. You are stronger than your fears. Once you go on this ride, you'll see, wow, theme park rides are just silly and not spooky at all. Meanwhile, they're sending her into her worst nightmare. She's like, uh, sure, mom and dad, you guys know everything, so I'll, I'll put my trust in you. Five minutes later. <laughs> That's like the scariest thing for an eight-year-old imaginable. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I've been there. I was scared at 11 on that thing. So they made me get in line for the Tower of Terror. 
And sure enough, I got psyched out as we were walking through oh, the creepy, yeah. elaborately decorated line. Oh, yeah. I was literally shaking, begging my parents to not make me do it. And when we got to the front of the line and sat down in the Let's front row go. of the ride yes. car, I had finally hit my limit. I put my head down and just started sobbing. Oh. The whole car of riders went silent and stared at me. Mom and Dad knew that I didn't need to be there anymore. The cast member in charge leaned down and very gently said to me, My dear, Wait, do I it. cannot start this ride do if it. you are crying. Do it. And from the depths of my tormented soul, do the ride, all please. I could say was one word. <laughs> Good. I was let off the ride much too no! It wasn't until I turned... No! I'm so sad. I want to relive this experience. And it wasn't until I turned 13 that I finally faced the Tower of Terror. As a child, I feared you. <laughs> but I am a child no longer. Oh, okay. She's still gonna get scared. Question for all of you. Did a certain movie or TV show really scare you as a kid, but then become your favorite when you got older? Because that totally happened with me. No! Like, Alice in Wonderland really freaked me out as a kid, especially the Cheshire cat when he disappears that first time, leaving only his smile. Now, that I am spooky. a sucker for anything Alice in Wonderland. Jurassic Park terrified me as a kid, and now it's my favorite live action movie. But that doesn't apply and to this, right? Maybe we all Please? eventually become fascinated by Please? the things that scared us as kids. Or maybe we all stay traumatized. After all, what is adulthood but a constant state of dealing with past trauma? Yeah. But you know what? I'm gonna go on record and say that I think a little bit of fear is healthy for kids. Yeah. Because if we never get scared, how can we learn to be brave? Yeah. So maybe the balloons and theme park rides and- Kate, please, I'm waiting for you to say, I got over those things, but the Tower of Terror, no! That's what I want. I want the story of you going on it and being scared. I need my emotions to be validated here. What about me? What about me? Man, do we have to go on YouTube and see if we can find old footage to experience this ourselves? Theme park rides and creepy grinning cats of your past taught you a lot more than you think. Hmm? I'm here! Lottie? Well, what are you doing here? I called Tom for help! Well, you see, Tom realized he's, you know, in London, so he called Jaden to ask her to do it, but cool. she was busy, so oh. she called James, who called Emirichu, who called Cypher Den, but she couldn't make it because she's in New York. Guys, what so the heck? Tabs, I would have been there! Jason, who called her sign invader, and I just happened to be in the area, so he called me, and here I am! Okay. Well, I mean, I did move out into the woods in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> what else did I expect? Yeah, we all thought that was kind of antisocial of you. I would have come to save well, you. thank you for coming all the way out here, Lottie. You think you can help me down? You know, we are tunes. You can survive the fall if you just jump down. I don't want to jump down. It's scary. Oh, I see where this is going. Okay, okay. She's about to conquer the fear. She's about to conquer the fear. Rebecca, I see you. Brilliant. Brilliant idea. We still have to look at Tower of Terror as soon as this one's done, though. I don't want to jump down. It's scary. Face your fears, Rebecca. Yeah! Uh -oh. Lottie, no. No, no, no. Not don't the do thing. it, Lottie. Please. Don't do the thing. No, 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 no. Don't do the thing. Whoa. <laughs> You're welcome. Anything else I can do for you? Wow. It didn't hurt because I'm a cartoon. You got it. Thank you so much for tuning in, but now we got to tune out. Bye! What? Oh, I'm so upset there's no Tower of Terror. Oh, are we doing this? Let's see if we can do this. Wait, you can just watch this? Are you allowed to just watch this? All right, so the ride is this fake elevator. That's the idea. And you sit down in this elevator. Now, how many elevators you been? They have seats. Come on, what are we doing here? The music is so spooky. The Twilight Zone. Spooky. Spooky! Oh, 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 a ghost! What is going on with a bloody ghost? I'm not sure if there's any kind of jump scare. I think it's just kind of spooky.
Honestly, I think the music scared me more than anything. I used to be really susceptible to scary music as a kid. Oh, wow, that's spooky. One stormy night long ago, five people stepped through the door of an elevator and into a nightmare. Hey. That door is opening once again, and this time, it's opening for you. Whoa, cool! Cool! And you get to see the spooky stuff on the sides. This is different than the one that I was at in um, LA, California, Disneyland. Disneyland. You are about to discover what lies beyond the fifth dimension. Beyond the, the fifth the dimension? Imagination in the Tower of Terror. All right, when do you get dropped? You start getting dropped, and that's when it gets spooky. Spooky drops. Yeah, it kind of just drops you and brings you back up randomly. Yeah, it just sets the mood and then it just drops you. That was spooky. That was spooky. Thank you for coming to the Twilight Zone. Cool! I didn't expect to have that experience today. Wow. All right, next up, I there's one that I'm really excited about. Tim Tom with the fizz! Yes, Tim Tom! Yes! I love Tim Tom! This video is only 4 minutes 20 seconds long, so we gonna zoom through this one, but I know it will be a blast. And then, after that, we've got two more absolute slappers. I can't believe it! I can't believe it! There's still so much fun left. Is that not epic? Is that not epic? Tell me that's not epic. It's epic, you know. Tim Tom with the fizz! Three, two, one. I used to be scared of a lot of things, and I still am. Mm. Just kidding. I think most <laughs> of the things I've been afraid of in my life are pretty normal. I used to be scared of the dark. I still kind of have a fear of spiders. And of course, I'm scared that soon I'll be forgotten. So everything I do might be meaningless. Wow. I'm also afraid of heights, I think. Like, okay. Oh, a ra that's a Tim Tom-ism. Just randomly getting way too deep. That's okay, I'ma pretend you didn't say that and not think too hard about it. I'm also afraid of heights, I think. Like, okay, you know that feeling you get when you're at the top of a building and you look down and yes. your whole stomach goes, Yes. Yes. Well, that's your body telling you to be afraid and careful and also maybe, hey, psst. Get down from there. <laughs> right. Well, I think I got some wires crossed in my brain because the first time I felt my stomach do that, I was like, let's do it. Oh, well, that's interesting. Whenever I'd go to the mall, I'd make it a point to walk near the railings on the second floor and ah! look over the edge to see if I could get my tummy to do the thing. And it would be like, Haha, it did the thing. But now I don't really get that feeling unless I'm really high up, which is a shame. Going to the mall used to be like riding a roller coaster. And now it's like, it's like going shopping. Gross. <laughs> What a bizarre thing that I did not expect someone to say. Yeah, I hate walking by the railings at the mall. I can't stand it. I, I never do it. I don't like that feeling at all, Tim. Honestly, I, I feel like if I was really tall, heights would scare me even more because then the railing isn't as like high up on you. It's like, whoa, you know, easier to fall. I think the Mall of America has a roller coaster in it, but that's in Minnesota, so I can't go because I'm afraid of spending all my money on plane tickets. Huh? I've never been afraid to fly though because you're more likely to get hurt while driving and I do that all the time. Besides, when the plane takes off, you feel like you're in a race car, you get free snacks. You like that part? Your tummy does the thing. You like that part? Tim! Wee. Like, I'm scared of small spaces, I think. Like, okay. Tim! Why are you, like, into the things that should be scary? The takeoff and the landing is definitely the scariest part of flying. I, I cannot stand taking off and landing in a plane. I think it's weird, because as a kid, I think I didn't mind it. But getting older, like, I care more. Maybe because it's, like, an actual, like, rational fear and not, like, just a random childhood fear. And as I became a rational adult that cares about more important things, Things than I did when I was a tiny child. Now it's like, oh yeah, there's a good reason to be scared of that. But I am scared of small spaces, I think. Like, okay, my old house had a linen closet with little built-in shelves, and when the door shut, there was still a little space in there. And when I was like 10, I was small enough to just uh, squeeze in. You'd think that would trigger all of the claustrophobia, but since I could open the door, it wasn't scary. But then one time, um, I showed my sister that I could fit in there and um, she held the door shut until oh, no. I cried and begged her to let me out. Evil! And then, um, she laughed at me for crying. Evil! 
Tim Tom will remember that. That is horrible. Now that is how you establish a fear. That is how you actually develop a fear that you're gonna take with you for a long time. I can, I like legit can barely see. So I'm gonna try. <laughs> like I might miss something important on my screen. I'm, I'm concerned, so. Luckily, most fears seem to fade as you get older, but sometimes the opposite can happen. Yeah. Yay! So that's fun. As a teen, I was never afraid of needles or blood, and I was kind of proud of that. I was like, I'm not afraid of needles or blood, and I'm kind of proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb. But then it turns out that things change, which, <laughs> side note, who thought that was a good idea? And now when I get my blood drawn or even think about needles, my skin starts to crawl and my hands get real weak. And look, they're not too strong to begin with, so how exactly do you expect me to hold on to this orange juice, the Red Cross? I know I got the good blood, and I want to save lives too, but you've been calling me like a jealous vampire ex-girlfriend for the past three months, and it's got me so worked up that I'm not even sure if that last line makes sense. Tim Tom. I, Tim Tom. Tim Tom. I I gotta say it. Bars. Oh, yeah. He just barred up on us. He just barred up. Tim, I see you. I see you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I can maybe explain this one. Maybe Tim doesn't realize it like this, or maybe this is different. When I was a kid, I never had to get needles directly into my veins. You know, you get like shots and stuff and they just go straight into like your shoulder muscle, which is so easy. A needle that just goes right into your shoulder muscle is so much easier than when they have to put like an IV in your actual vein on your arm. Oh, that is so much worse. So I never had to get that as a child, but as I got older, now I have to do that like every single time. And it is the worst. And yeah, when I was in the hospital a few months ago, I had an IV just in me for like a week. I know, I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate, a lot of homies who have been to the hospital like that, but that was a new experience for me. Oh. I was like, let's make this costume worth it by putting it on for at least a tiny bit. And it was the worst. Do vampires get jealous? I wanted to suck your blood. But not anymore. <laughs> a lot of people are scared of earthquakes, which is fair because they destroy buildings and trigger tsunamis, but I've been in enough small ones where nothing happened that I think I've learned to have the exact wrong reaction when the ground starts shaking. Oh. Wee. I'm also not afraid of elevators like some people, because like planes, they're really safe. But one time I was in an wait, elevator- Wait, wait. Okay, you, you threw a lot at me there real quick. Okay, the okay, earthquake wait, thing, wait, 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 it's a little spooky. It, to me, it depends on where you are. Because I live in Los Angeles where there are earthquakes. There was literally one yesterday. And as soon as an earthquake happens, you just go on Twitter. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, an earthquake. And the thing is, I'm not even remotely scared of earthquakes when I'm on the ground. When I'm up here, like I'm like Bruh. several floors up. When I'm up here and can't get out of the building I live in, earthquakes become a lot spookier, you know? But if you're just chilling in a field, an earthquake, no worries, bro. Also, elevators. Okay, I want to read this part. Apparently, there's only ever been one reported instance of an elevator free falling, and it was due to a structural collapse. Elevators are designed with multiple cables, and even if they were all somehow cut, there are brake pads that prevent the elevator car from free falling. Okay. That's interesting. Cause like planes, they're really safe. But one time I was in an elevator during an earthquake and the doors got Ooh. stuck for a bit. Ooh. I thought we were gonna be trapped for longer and that was kind of scary. But then the doors popped open and I was like, I've learned nothing. <laughs> I wonder what other not scary things you can combine to make a scary thing. I'm not afraid of cats or dogs, but the show Cat Dog kept me up as a kid. <laughs> Fair. How do they poop? A car Fair. with legs would be pretty terrifying, but that doesn't exist yet. <laughs> it's probably no surprise that the thing I've been most afraid of in my life is horror movies. They're designed to scare you, and as a kid, I would get yeah. wrapped up in the lore and completely believe everything the movie said. All the mm. other kids are like, haha, ooh, spooky, and I'm oh, sitting spooky. there taking notes like, so you can contact your dead wife with a tape recorder, but demons will haunt and kill you. Okay. Fascinating. And I'm not gonna lie, after watching a horror movie, when the house is real dark, the rest of the family is asleep, and there's a gentle creak in the hallway, my heart still does a little drum fill. But at least now that I'm a grown-up, I know it's probably just a clown, and they only want to see you smile. Yay! Forever. That is so true. <laughs> you know, to this day, a lot of my scary dreams, I know that I'm in a horror movie. Like, most of the scary dreams I have, in my dream, I don't think they're real, but I think I'm a part of, like, a horror movie. I don't know. I don't, I can't really explain what goes on in my brain, but I'm, like, in a movie. 
but that doesn't make me not afraid. It's still scary. And I literally, I don't have them often, but I had one last night and it made me wake up at 5 a.m. And so I'm very sleep deprived during this recording. And so I was gonna film two videos tonight, but I'm just gonna film this one. All right, that was a fun slapper. I loved him, Tom. All right, we got two more childhood fears videos. Before we get to the grand finale, let us check out our homie who we have only looked at once. Young Young Tails! Now, last Young Young Tails video that we saw, he put a picture of a spider on the screen without warning us, and that infuriated me. Now, I blurred it for you guys, so you didn't have to go through the same pain as me. But clearly, this guy's concept of fears is very different than a lot of people's, because he thought that was okay. I did not. But let's see what he does this time. Hopefully, he doesn't do it. But let's check it out. My childhood fears. Three, two, one. Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, yeah. The best part is, I got it for free. Huh. So, uh, despite what you may have seen from my Inktober posts on my Twitter and Instagrams, which is a tendency to have some edgy or not so friendly looking creatures, yeah. I get scared very easily. And I'm definitely not the one that finds being scared to death fun. The exterior of this tofu bod may exude extra firmness, but it's actually really soft. Look, if being terrified and losing like 10,000 years off your life is your definition of fun, then be my guest. But the only way you can get me to do anything remotely scary like a haunted house or a theme park or watch a scary movie is A, give me a crap ton of money, <laughs> or B, you are Rose of Blackpink, which I think we both know is not happening anytime soon. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, the man knows what he wants. You gotta give him that. He has a firm set of rules that he sticks to. I am very confused as to how he can have this mindset, but then also own like scorpions and tarantulas and stuff. But hey, are YouTubers ever normal? Not really. Anyone that's normal is boring. He's so crazy. <laughs> this is me, present day, by the way. But I was much worse as a kid. Even things that weren't meant to be scary still scared me as a child. Mm -hmm. Which might be a deep psychological reason why I have such a weird relationship with scary things. So that is what we are talking about here. Yes. Things in my childhood that absolutely terrified me. So basically, the point of this video is to talk about how much of a wimp you were. Yeah. yeah pretty much. Okay, so first up is scary rides. Like, it wasn't Six Flags Ooh. that is scary. Those are pretty terrifying in itself. But it also didn't have to be during Halloween time. Ooh, it could I've just never be been like there. a regular ride on a regular day, and I would still get scared. Like the Matterhorn? at oh. Disneyland. I was big enough Whoa. to ride it so my parents- ah! Oh man, just mentioning that Nate, what? That's gotta be one of the most- And that's- What are you, insane? That's gotta be one of the scariest rides a human being can take. Only three people have survived! I was big enough to ride it so my parents decided to take me on. Obviously being how young I was at the time, I didn't know what to expect. So I turned to my most First trustworthy coaster. and reliable parents for some uh, details about this ride. And my parents told me, oh, this was going to be like a simple sled ride. And then I'll get to see this abominable snowman, uh, whatever that is. Right. And since they're your parents, you know, you just accept it. Yeah, well, that's anyways, okay. Anyways, when they explained it to me, I knew what simple sled ride was, but I didn't know what abominable was. <laughs> you know, it's kind of oh, one of those no. words that you're not really expected to know at such a young age. Like... Floxanosinihilipophilification. We still don't need to know about Floxanosinihilipophilification. We still don't need to know that one. But yeah, Abominable. What an unfair name for the scary snowman. The Abominable Snowman. We never say Abominable in life. Ever. So how is a kid, if, if any kid who hasn't heard of the Abominable Snowman, telling them about the Abominable Snowman will not fill them in that it's a scary thing. How many kids do you think have fallen victim to this because they didn't know what the word abominable meant? Probably most. Most kids. All of the kids. So I had to use some major critical thinking to figure out the rest. Well, they said snowman. Mm -hmm. Frosty is a snowman. Mm -hmm. And Frosty is really cool because he's friendly. Yay. So maybe this abominable snowman might just be Frosty's cousin. Maybe yeah. abominable could just be another word for adorable. Yeah. And if that's the case, well, how bad can this ride be? 
Plus, the music playing in line was so happy, Let's clearly go. signifying that this ride was also going Let's to be Let's go! Clearly, I'm going to enjoy this ride. And, oh my gosh, why is the tunnel so dark? It just starts out that way and gets all bright and happy, Let's just go. like Small World, right, Mom? Mom? <laughs> Wait, what was that? Let's just say after that, I knew what abominable meant. <laughs> Simple sled ride. Frosty's oh cousin. I met the abominable snowman. Oh, uh, I wanted it more. I wanted more. I wanted the whole play by play, young young. I wanted the whole play by play. But that's okay. That's okay. We don't need the play by play. It's just raw bird IDK. And we are looking at spooky things today. I met the abominable snowman. He was not adorable. So with this new vulnerable. knowledge, it became the number one ride I definitely did not want to ride at Disneyland, mm -hmm. along with Indiana Jones, Thunder Mountain, and Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. For some reason, I was able to tolerate Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion, though. But no joke, I hated riding on those rides so much, I did everything I could to get out of them. Resist, whine, cry, reason with the Disney employees. Yeah. Listen. Clearly, neither one of us wants to be here. I'm obviously in distress. Please don't Bro, make me go. It is way more of a pain for that guy to sort out getting a person to escort you out of the ride than it is for him to just press the button and never see your face again. It doesn't matter how miserable he is, but how I can't imagine waiting in line for as long as it takes to get on the ride and being scared the whole time. Like waiting in lines is painful enough. Waiting in line to be do something you're literally afraid of, that's rough. Please don't make me go. Wait, I was brought here against my will. I'm being held hostage. No. That snowman was pretty scary, and by association, I was also terrified of the one in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. But <laughs> there was one animatronic that makes these abominable snowmen look like adorable look like snowmen. These abominable look like snowmen. adorable snowmen. And that was the Enchanted Tree ah! in the Rainforest Cafe. Dun dun dun. Ah! As a kid, I loved going to the Rainforest Cafe. It had a bunch of animal stuff that I liked animatronic animals, Word. toys, Word. fish. Basically, it's like being on the Jungle Cruise, except it's free. But there was that one section, that one section of the store that I always avoided because of the tree. The tree. And its face. Huh? Is he gonna show us the real thing? I was about to Google it. He better show us what this face really looks like because I ain't getting fully spooked yet. I'm trying to get a full spooky. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's see the snowman. Let's see the snowman, by the way. Let's see the spooky. I'm ready. I'm waiting for it. Ah! All right, that wasn't that scary. I'm gonna keep it real. Is that the only time you see him? Is that the only time you see him the whole ride? Man, I was ready to be so much more scared. All right, how spooky is this one? Young, young. And by the way, uh, make sure you're subscribed to all the people that were watching today. It goes without saying, I say it in every video, but it's extremely important. These people work super hard on the videos. Let me explain studios, Tim, Tom, Young, Young Tales, Jaden, animation. Make sure you're subscribed to all of them and supporting their work. And if you're liking this video so far, you want a boop like on this video for me, that would be cool. I would appreciate it. And if you're watching this video and you have, you're not subscribed to the channel, well, that's just silly. I think you should hit subscribe to the channel. That would be cool. <laughs> but there was that one section, that one section of the store that I always avoided mm -hmm. because of the tree mm -hmm. in its face. Mm -hmm. Ugh, I just can't get over how this thing looks. Like, like, look at that face. Oh! That's not even the creepiest part. Its eyes would be closed, waiting for uh... you to walk by unsuspectedly. And then, out of nowhere, it would open its eyes ah! wide and start talking to you like some kind of predator. So Why is this thing talking to me? I don't care if it's supposed to be friendly and its name is Tracy. That face is not supposed to be on a tree. Yeah. It's the stuff of nightmares. Yeah. Dang, uh, this video actually might not be 10 minutes. All right, now this last and final thing is from a movie. And to this day, I haven't brought myself back to watch it again based on how disturbed I was okay. when I first watched it. Okay. And that is... No face. Oh! From Spirited Away. Really? I know, I know. This movie received a lot of love, and it's like everyone's favorite out of the Studio Ghibli films. But honestly, 
I didn't see the appeal. Oh. Like, excuse me, is there like some other version of Spirit Away I don't know about? Oh man, oh young young, you're burning me. You're burning me with these hot takes. That's the spiciest take anyone has given in one of these videos in a while. That take is flaming hot. Wow, I didn't find those guys spooky at all, but I watched Spirited Away as a fully grown adult, so I guess I have no concept. There's so many other things in that movie that I feel like should scare you rather than these guys or this guy. I don't know if it's these guys or this guy. I gotta watch Spirited Away again sometime. Yeah. Like, excuse me, is there like some other version of Spirit Away I don't know about? One where No Face is actually some lovable character instead of this giant black blob monster oh, that true. eats people? Because that's what I remember seeing when I was true, a little kid. True, that is and a I thing. Was scarred. And that's not all. This movie had a bunch of other things that I thought were terrifying. Like yes. when the girl's parents yep. turn into pigs, yep. these spirit thingies, giant babies, yep. scary old woman. Yep. But No Face definitely takes the cake. True. Literally. He could devour a whole cake. And people. He probably likes tofu. Ah, oh, yeah, that brings back memories. But hey, you know what was a good movie? Castle in the Sky. Ooh. That movie was beautiful and it's probably one of the most underrated Studio Ghibli films Ooh. ever. Basically, because it had nothing scary like I mentioned earlier. Okay. Obviously, being all grown up and kind of mature, I have come to terms with these childhood fears. The abominable snowman and I are best buds now. That tree... Uh, well, let's just say I don't really go to the Rainforest Cafe anymore. <laughs> and I should be fine with no face now, possibly. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'll actually rewatch Spirited Away again and maybe understand why everyone likes it so much. Oh, In the meantime, man. Now I have to oh, man. I'm he's burning. <laughs> I'm burning! I was already hot enough in this suit, bro. First of all, to any of my uh, furry friends out there, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. I am flaming hot in this thing. It's cold in this room, but I'm flaming hot in this thing. I have no idea how you do it, boss. But yeah, Castle in the Sky, I have to check that out. In the meantime, now I have to deal with more grown-up fears, like global warming mm -hmm, and taxes. Mm -hmm. So, in conclusion, the big takeaway from all of this is that you can still be afraid of some weird stuff and still turn out cool. Like me. Yeah. Huh. Huh. Don't do a spooky. Don't do a spooky, young young. Young young, don't do a spooky. Don't do a real spooky. Okay, I'm locked in, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm watching. Don't mess with me, young young. Don't mess with me. Is something gonna come up? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. 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 Is he gonna spook? Is he gonna do the spooky? Is he gonna do the spooky? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Are we good? Come on. Come on! Oh, wow. You can see, I, I wasn't even remotely scared by that. I think I don't even think I... Don't even think I was scared. <laughs> All right, we got through a Young Young Tales video without bug photos being thrown in our face. Thank you, based Young Young. Okay, okay. We've been looking at some pretty spooky spookies. Let's keep it real. There's been some spookies today. And now let's close it off with the final spooky. <laughs> Jaden! Things that freak me out. Let's go, homies. If you ain't got it by now, you just ain't getting it. Lock in for this last one. Three, two, uno. Arrive. You may or may not have picked up on this yet, but I'm not the most confident, brave. Whoa, hey, look at me. I'm totally the best. Really? Kind of person. I'm shy and nervous and self-conscious and a... Uh, mess. There's a lot of bigger, important things that I worry about, but I'm just gonna talk about the stupid ones that'll probably make you think good. I'm just dumb. Good, good, good. Gotta good. keep it upbeat and entertaining. I can't be creating swirling vortexes of existential crisis and self-doubt yet. Judge me if you want, but I mean, I can't help but be pointlessly freaked out about these things. I'm sure you've got your weird triggers too. Mm -hmm. Loud flushing toilets. I can't remember what? a single moment of my life where I haven't been scared of loud flushing what? toilets. What? It's just the fact that, especially if you're in a stall, you're locked in this tiny space with this solitary, isolated toilet bowl, and it's always a gamble. Some toilets are really nice and quiet, and they just go... 
It's the freaking biggest. Give us the real sound, bro. I think a toilet's gonna pull some ungodly sound out of nowhere, but it turns out to be practically silent. I listen. I can't say I've ever been afraid of loud toilets, but I will say there are some toilets that are ridiculously loud. <laughs> And I would prefer if they weren't, but I know why they do it. The reason those toilets are so loud is because those are for the public and they need to be able to handle whatever the public throws at them. Your home toilet, you don't need the strongest toilet in the world. You don't think, at least. But the public, you never know. You never know what those animals are gonna do. It turns out to be practically silent. I get overwhelmingly happy. Probably too much to be considered normal anymore. But then there's the ones you flush and all of a sudden you've just released Satan himself and mm -hmm. a thousand tortured souls yeah. from the fiery pits of- What? Just- K ah! I Jane, get into can you a not? mental breakdown stage. I can't. I can't even move. Have you ever seen the videos of like goats or some other animal where they just freeze and Faint. fumble over yeah. if they get startled? That's me, but I, I don't fall down. If I'm in a house where there's a bunch of extra room in the bathroom. The absolute peak of evolution. The absolute peak. These are the most powerful creatures. These are the most powerful creatures that walk the earth. The goats that have no defense mechanism because as soon as something remotely surprises them, they immediately faint and become a stuffed animal. The world knew that those goats would be too powerful if they didn't faint. That's why they're called the goat so or something if i'm in a house where there's a bunch of extra room in the bathroom i get as far away from it as possible immediately but again if i'm in a stall i have to end up just pressing True. myself you against the door as much as i can and wait for it you to just end. gotta do Give it a bimbo if you're so terrified why don't you just leave the stall uh, well, good sir. Have you ever noticed that bathroom stalls tend to mainly open inwards? That means in order to leave, you gotta step closer to the <laughs> toilet. Um, True. No, thank you. That's the opposite True. of what I want. I'd rather just be a frozen victim for 10 seconds. Why do factories even make loud flushing toilets anymore? Just make them all quiet. Please? I'm getting tired of pressing that dumb button, and all of a sudden all the Jurassic Park movies start screeching at me at the same time. <laughs> You know what's worse though? You know what is worse? When there's a public toilet and it's super loud, but it's like a sensor and you like lean forward a little bit and it <laughs> while you're still sitting on it. Is that not the worst of both worlds? That is the worst of both worlds. Yo, if you ain't about those public toilets, let me get a hallelujah. Huh? Let me get a hallelujah. Speaking of bathrooms, you know those public hand dryer things? The yes. ones where you have to stick your hands in and it the air blasts blades. air? I, I can't do those. I have this what? image in my head where I put my hands in and, and then some cyborg future handcuffs lock onto my wrists oh. and I get kidnapped by a hand dryer. Like an evil bathroom transformer waiting for its next human victim. Well, I love bad, those you things. Dumb hand dryer. You can't fool me. I love those. And speaking of hands, I am just on a roll with these transitions today. I'm self-conscious of them. No, I'm not just afraid True. of hands in general. Scary That's stuff. tyrophobia. I had to look that up. I have this dumb thing where my hands are always cold. Not just like, oh, your hands are a bit cold. They're frigid. It's so bad that I'm actually very nervous about shaking people's hands or giving Aww. high fives just because they're so cold. Whenever you meet someone new, you normally shake their hand. Well, I don't want to shake their hand if their first impression of me is going to be... Hi, I'm Jaden. Boom! I'm secretly an ice witch, and you've just been cursed with the power of a million ice cubes! Oh, no. How about instead of shaking hands? That, honestly, yo, I'ma keep it real. Your boy, Robert IDK, I am mildly anemic. So typically, my hands are kind of cold. They can get warm, they can get really warm. But a lot of the time, I do have slightly colder hands than most people. So when I shake people's hands, or just touch another person, I'm typically the colder one. And I have been self-conscious about that over the years. But then when you find Find an absolute wonderful person who will be like, oh no, I'm too warm. I like that you're cold. It's like, oh, thank you so much. Insecurity deleted. Thank you. Thank you. So I can relate. I would honestly love to shake a hand that's colder than mine sometime. That would be awesome. But if I go to a convention, I'm not shaking uh, 500 hands because I value my health. I would love to shake all of your hands. Trust me, but I value my health. How about 
but instead of shaking hands, we just do finger guns. I like hey, that idea. Much don't bother the Draco! If you've all been in that situation where you have to say bye to someone and it's like, well, shoot, am I supposed to shake their hand or hug them or whatever other confusing goodbye motion? Yeah, who would do a, who? I don't know, I don't know, Jaden. I don't know who would do a weird, like, snappy finger point when they say bye to people. Just a weird thing. I don't, I don't know why anyone would do that. Just do finger guns. Less confusion and contact. I'm sure the mysophobes can agree with me on that one. And with high yeah. fives, normally it's not that bad, but I still try to minimize it to the least amount of physical contact as I can. Someone goes, high five, and I just smack their hand as fast as possible. It's weird and noticeable sometimes, but trust me, I'm doing you a favor. What else can I be stressed about? Time limits in video games. The oh, less amount of time, yeah. the worse it is. I just can't stand the feeling of a constant, you better hurry up and complete your oh, mission. Yeah. You only have a limited amount of thinking time. Every action you do that has no impact on furthering your path is a mistake. You're oh, doing yeah. everything wrong and your inevitable punishment is steadily approaching. I don't, to me, that doesn't matter for games where like, if you, if you run out of time, you can just start. You only lose like, three minutes of gameplay or whatever. That is no worries to me. Actually, no, there's one exception to that. I do have an exception to that. The Banjo-Kazooie tomb. King Sandy Butt's tomb. King Sandy Butt. All right, we get to see someone take the L in King Sandy Butt's tomb. This part traumatized me so badly as a kid that to this day, listening to the music makes me want to curl up in a fetal position and cry. This was really unexpectedly terrifying. Just that switch to Banjo's POV before it happens makes it so shocking. It's King Sandy Butt's tomb. We're just a regular. True. Yeah, if that. Wait, you have to try it, Dingus. Oh, I'm not watching this person not try. You have to get through the little maze in time. Is this guy even trying? Oh my gosh, this guy isn't even trying. Try! Try! And the music gets crazier and crazier. Oh my gosh, guys, we have an absolute dingus on the on the joystick today. I son, I am disappointed in you. You will never get past King Sandy Buck if you do not put in more effort. Alright, that's it for him. That's it for him. Whoa! I didn't remember that part. That's kind of terrifying. Okay, so yeah, there are some spooky time limits. The, the time limit that did really bother me, though, was in Pikmin 1. Time limits where you can lose, like, five hours, six hours of progress. That's what bothers me. In the Pikmin games, you have, you operate in days, right? You, each day is, I don't know, what, like 12 minutes or something? You have a timer that runs out, and it's not a big deal if you if you don't make it back to the ship in time, that's fine. But in Pikmin 1, you only have like 30 days or something like that. You have to be pacing yourself properly from the beginning of the game. And if you aren't doing it right, you can lose the whole game. Pikmin 2, they got rid of that. And so I never played Pikmin 1 for that reason. I was like, I can't do that. I can't commit to this. That's why I can't do a Pokemon Nuzlocke either, Jaden. Jaden, how are you scared of video game time limits, but you do Pokemon Nuzlocke's? That's way scarier. The thought of doing something and working on a game for like 10 plus hours and then losing it all, that is a nightmare to me. That is like a legitimate nightmare. Nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Even in Mario, I mean, it doesn't affect me too much because the timer is up in the corner and not in your face True. like some games. And there's typically a lot of time. Lots but as soon as that music gets faster, oh boy, everything just got intense. Mm. True, true. Oh, I'm in trouble now. Time to sprint. No time to look for secrets or nothing. I'm gonna have some here. Our lives are a time limit when you think about it. Back when I was a kid, I had this Game Boy Advance SpongeBob. Can you game. not? For the second level, you had to get SpongeBob to the top of Sandy's treehouse by hopping up branch platforms. But the thing was, there were bird baths scattered around, and you only had a limited amount of time to get to the next bath before SpongeBob dried out. I was Whoa. so scared of running out of time. I never got past the level. I stood at the bottom. That's just terrible. Sitting Fine. in the bath, occasionally stepping out, only to get extremely panicked to see the time start ticking oh down. Oh my gosh! Back in. As a kid, you take it so seriously. Like if SpongeBob dries out, that's it. That is it. My boy is gone in real life. I feel that. I feel. To me, that's like when uh, Hercules was swimming through the lake of the souls or whatever the heck. I talked about this in a video. I don't remember which one it is. There's no way I can track it down. But I talked about this in a video. Like. 
like two or three years ago. In the Hercules movie, if he swims in the souls, he immediately like ages. And if he's in there too long, that's it. So he starts swimming in there and he is like aging as he's swimming. This is the scariest thing of all time. And they're getting ready to end him. Yeah, this is so terrifying, dude. Hercules was a like a legit legendary movie. I love that movie. Yeah, now that's a time limit in a game. That's SpongeBob drying up in real life. Yo, no cap, I'm gonna keep it real. I have been loving watching all this content about old SpongeBob video games. Thank you, Jaden. I love it so much. Again, if you guys want me to start a gaming channel by the end of the year, please let me know in the comments. I really want to play that game again. I've gotten better at video games since then, and I kind of want to experience the other do it, do it, do it. of that game. Okay, so since I have zero self-control when it Let's comes go. to video games Let's go. and Come on. nostalgia, I, <laughs> I went out and I bought the game. Yes! <laughs> I bought the game again because I wanted to play the level and prove to you that I can beat it. So, yeah. I'm, I'm so excited. Gonna, I am so excited. Let's Boy, go. I'm play the level. <gasps> game Boy Advance SP. Though. I haven't played this in... How many years? At least 10. Awesome. Oh my music. god. <laughs> what am I doing? This is one of those games where it didn't even save your progress. You had to wow. enter a password. Oh my god. The pressure's on, actually. That actually makes Look it way this. easier. You it don't have to do the rest of it. 20 seconds. What the heck? That's pressure at the max. All right. That is pressure oh, at the max. Fun. And then you get like the spatulas. People are gonna say, get See, the You ASI! got so much time. Thanks, you have sorry. so much yeah, time, it's insane. This is totally gaming channel status. Oh no! <laughs> Just kidding. And all right, see? Dang. Yeah, that was like the easiest looking thing ever. You had so much time. She got from one bird bath to another in like four seconds. Yeah, yeah, that is what I would call an irrational fear. Jaden, you gotta try. You gotta try. Come on, homie. Hot and cold. I don't know what my problem is here. I've just never liked it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hot and cold is a game it's where a you try to Katie find Perry. something based on audio hints other players give you. Oh. Cold means you're farther away. Hot means you're getting closer. Right, so basically, right, right. you're walking around aimlessly while other people are screaming at you. I remember That's this. That's how my mind interprets it anyway. I can't cope with the constant input from people based on my every action. And it gets worse when I'm getting closer. With every step, people are getting more and more intense at me. And oh. I feel like something's just going to pop pop up out of nowhere and uh, stab me. You're getting warmer. You're I hot. love this. You're steaming. Oh, you're, you're hot, hot, you're hot, you're on fire. Yeah. Oh, it you're in a volcano. You're, stop, you're freaking me out. I can't handle all this intensity. I haven't, I forgot that game existed. Yeah, hot and cold was hype. It was so hype. The simplest possible game. The simplest possible game. But it's some heat. No pun intended. Absolute slap arena. It's what a simple but fun game. He's so simple but so fun. I like it. I can't handle all this intensity. I just want to run away back to the cold area. Aww. It's calm over there. It's chill. Last one I'll talk about here. Before YouTube, and even since I was a kid, I've always been self-conscious about my voice. But for Aww. different reasons. When I was young, somehow I started believing, wow, my voice is really low compared to other girls. People are gonna think I'm a boy. That one didn't make too much sense. I don't know how I came to that conclusion. I don't believe that one anymore. But recently it's been more of, my voice is weird and awkward and mumbly, and I don't like it. I'm really reserved, so I think since I never did much talking, my voice wasn't able to develop as much and get as strong as it could be. It's True. funny, when I first started making videos, when I had to sit down and record, oh, which yeah. back then only took like 15 minutes, which like, pfft, I wish it only took 15 minutes to oh, record yeah. audio now. But even after those recording sessions, my throat would hurt and end up being really sore because I wasn't used to talking that much for that long. It was kind of pathetic. True. Okay, I didn't used to... For for the longest time, I did not like my voice. And I still... My voice is a little wacky at times. I think it's because I didn't start talking until I was four years old. Which is super, super weird. Usually people start speaking a lot sooner than that. But I had a really loud-mouthed sister who would always talk for me. So all I had to really do was... And like, I would literally just like do that mm -hmm. 
I did that as a child to communicate. So that may have contributed to my voice becoming weird later. But yeah, I had a lisp for the longest time. I guess I don't. Maybe in the slightest. I don't know. Do I slightly have a silly little lisp? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I don't know. But it used to be bad. I used to be like, Hey guys, hey guys. I don't know, I don't know, I, I think that's how I sounded. And I don't know, I, I I mean, my voice has improved for sure, but like, I don't know. I embrace the silly parts of my voice now. You know what, it worked out. Imagine if I had a normal voice, that would be so lame, so lame. But now it takes literally six hours to get my audio done, so I've come a long way. I've Yay. been swaying back and forth between being self-conscious and just being okay with my voice because I still think it's a bit too mumbly and weird, but I've been reading some mm. comments like, oh, Jaden, I really like your voice, which yeah. I mean, thank you, but I, I don't really see it. But I, if, if you enjoy it, then I'm glad. My vocal cords say thank you. Ah, Thank you. I, I like Jaden's voice. The reason people like Jaden's voice is because they like Jaden and her voice is her. You know, that's one thing I think about with a lot of people who suffer from insecurities regarding themselves, their appearance, their voice, their whatever. It's like, if you have a great personality and you are a kind person, it doesn't matter. You're fine. People will love those things about you because that's you, you know? I couldn't picture Jaden with any other voice. And like, if I suddenly had a different voice, it wouldn't feel like me anymore, you know? But we are always our own worst critics. And so we just look at our voice in like, in a vacuum in like an isolation. It's like, how does this voice compare to other voices? And so we'll critique ourselves, but, but yeah, over time I have learned to like my voice. I mean, literally my voice is my like career <laughs> at this point. It'll become double my career when I finally start putting out more music again. She wears a frown in dressing gown. When that day finally comes. But for now, people, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful look at fears. I can't put all their links right here, so all of the links are in the description for these creators. Make sure you are supporting them. They are wonderful and deserve your support. Now, here is the video where we looked at YouTuber pets. If you haven't seen this video, this is also a very long but classic awesome video where I have my muffins out and it's awesome. This is a video that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. As always, my friends, thank you all so much for watching and have a good one.